Hello there and welcome to another episode of How To Adam Audio. This time it's about the acoustics of your monitoring environment and how that affects your work. When you're putting together a decent studio monitoring system, of course, choosing and using proper studio monitors that present you with neutral and truthful information is key. Unfortunately, this is not where it stops, because your speakers are not only radiating sounds towards you, but also in all other directions. Eventually, these sound waves coming from your speakers will travel through your room and hit some obstacle. Maybe the room's boundaries, the walls, ceilings, but also furniture, or the desk that you're sitting on right now. Depending on the frequency of the wave you're looking at and the characteristics of the material of the obstacle, there's multiple physical phenomena that could go on, such as reflection, where sound is bouncing back from hitting the obstacle, and with the sound coming back, the energy is maintained and goes back into your room. Or there's absorption, where the energy of the sound wave is converted into heat, not coming back to your room, or there's diffraction, where the sound wave is coming back again from hitting the obstacle, but is bouncing back into your room in a diffuse fashion, with the energy being distributed in multiple directions. And usually there's a bit of all these three phenomena happening at the same time. Now it's getting more interesting when you look at sound waves that come back from your room to your listening spot, because then these waves coming back from your room are overlapping and adding to the sound waves coming directly from your speaker. These pieces of information add up and change what you're listening to. And that is now an issue, because when you go back and think about it, what you want from your monitoring environment is to be truthful and neutral and provide you with the information about your audio signal and not information from your room. So when your room doesn't play along well, it is affecting what you're listening to and also it is, as a result, affecting the decisions that you're making with your audio. So, what could now be problems with your listening room and its acoustics? I would say a reverb time that is too long, so it takes too much time for the sound that's coming from the speakers to be fully absorbed and fall silent. Or a reverb time that is not spectrally balanced, so maybe your reverb in the high frequencies is super short and it's pretty long in the low frequencies, that could be a problem as well. But also early and strong discrete reflections these could be a problem because they have a lot of energy and they come very early after the direct sound, so they have a lot of impact to what you're listening to. We could now go into great detail on studio acoustic concepts, but for now let's just look at one single parameter, one single idea that is maybe most relevant for you. If you look at an example, a leaking water pipe, and you want to do damage control, what you do is you go down right to the source of the water, which is the leak itself, and you don't try to mop up the water at the edges of the puddle. If we translate that back to acoustic, that means we are looking at the first reflections, the ones where the sound bounces off obstacles for the first time after coming from the speaker. If we can manage to suppress the reflections there, we are A, massively and very effectively reducing the reverb time because we're taking out the energy from the room, and B, we're getting rid of those critical early discrete reflections that have a lot of impact. Of course, there are also other phenomena like room modes, which massively affect the reproduction of low frequencies, and we're going to cover that in videos that are still to come. For me, an ideal working environment would be one where the reverb time is below half a second and the spectrum of the reverb is nicely balanced. So it's not super dry or uncomfortable to be in that space for a long time. And also, it doesn't give you those critical, discrete, early reflections that we talked about. As an opposite scenario, you could imagine a room made out of concrete and glass with very low textured surfaces, generating a lot of discrete reflections and a long reverb time because it's all acoustically hard surfaces. So, if you want to improve the acoustics of your environment, maybe think about the following ideas. Make sure your setup is symmetrical, meaning the speakers are symmetrical, but they're also sitting symmetrically in the room. Make your room treatment symmetrical. If you can only afford two absorbers, that's not an issue, but don't put them on one side of the room, but distribute them symmetrically in the room. Also, correctly positioning your listening spot, your speakers, your furniture, that also goes a long way. But of course, then as a next step, there's all sizes and shapes of absorbers and diffusers that you can get or that you can make on your own to help optimize your room. 
In order to find the right spot for your absorbers to kill these first reflections, I like to recommend a pretty common method that I like to use myself. In this method, you need a mirror and you need somebody to assist. Sit in your listening spot and have the mirror moved along the walls, trying to find the spots on the walls where you can see your speakers in the mirror. So you're directing the second person up, down, left, right in order to find that spot where the reflection visually is happening for your speakers to show up in the mirror. And the same thing happens for sound. That's why you put your absorbers afterwards at these spots where you could see the speakers in the mirrors. And that's where you put your absorbers and that's why you can find absorbers on the side walls, the rear walls, the ceiling, at these reflection points in not only our listening room here, but also in the majority of other studios. I hope all this will be useful to you next time you're tackling the acoustics of your studio space. Please let us know what you think and put your questions down in the comment sections and we'll do our best to answer them. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Tschüss.